It is time. The day that we have all been waiting for is finally here. Everything that I have ever done has been leading up to this moment right here. However, I'm about to partake in a very gentlemanly journey. So I'm only going to say this once. After that, we will never refer to this ever again. So be sure to cherish this moment while you still have the chance. Are you ready? Here we go. <gasps> Let's play number 69! And now, our feature presentation. Let's dream. Let's play Diabolical Box! Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond. Welcome to my Let's Play of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box for the Nintendo DS. It was an incredibly revolutionary moment for me when I got to Let's Play my first Professor Layton game back in year six. And I am so incredibly grateful to be continuing this journey with no more delays along the way. We are going to be Let's Playing the Layton game basically every year throughout the rest of my Let's Playing journey. I kind of wish I got to do it a bit sooner, but because we were delayed a little bit, we'll be getting to re-experience the Professor Layton universe uh, quite regularly on this channel, so I hope you enjoy the journey that we are about to go on, because in my opinion, the Professor Layton games only get better and better with each new installment. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get things started in the latest installment of the Professor Layton series. There are tales of a box that brings death upon any who dare open it. Tell me, do you think those rumors could be true? Hey look, there it is! Now this is what I call deluxe. Just look at this room. Yes, I can certainly see why some call the Molin Teddy Express a cruise ship on rails. <laughs> this sofa's great. <laughs> now don't forget, Luke. A gentleman pays attention to his manners in every setting. So what's the actual story behind the Elysium box anyway? All who open it die, huh? Hmm, sounds awfully fishy to me. Perhaps so, but we've seen it happen with our very own eyes. 
The answer is out there, Luke, but I just need to find it. We will. I know it. Prologue, the Elysian Box. There was a box that was rumored to kill anyone who opened it. At first, neither the professor nor I believed it. But all that changed with the arrival of a single letter. A few days earlier. Look, have a look here. Oh, what's that, professor? It's a letter from my dear friend and mentor, Dr. Andrew Schrader. Is everything all right? My dear Herschel, knowing you, I imagine you've already heard of the relic known as the Elysian Box. This strange antique is infamous for killing anyone who opens it. Truth be told, I'm a bit dubious of the box's murderous reputation, but you know how I am. Once something piques my interest, I simply must get to the bottom of it. That's why I'm pleased as punch to tell you that the elusive item is finally in my possession. What's more, I believe I'm on the cusp of unraveling a great mystery tied to this box. For the moment, let's just say I have a theory, though I haven't been able to prove it yet. Initially, it was my intention to finish my research before daring to open its lid. But I must confess that my curiosity is simply overpowering. In the unlikely event that anything should happen to me, please finish the work I've started here. Your friend, Andrew Schrader. According to the postmark, this letter was sent two days ago. We should go pay the doctor a visit. I just can't shake the feeling that something awful has happened. Well, your intuition's usually spot on. I say we head out right away. Luke, before we go, would you be so kind as to fetch my car keys? They're in one of the drawers in that desk. Sure thing, Professor. Um, if there's something you wish to inspect, Luke, simply give it a tap. Luke must find the keys to the Professor's car. Search by tapping on the desk drawers. Now, real quick, just before we get things started, this should go without saying, but I just wanted to let you know that if you have not played Curious Village, you should not watch this Let's Play. You should go ahead and either watch that LP or uh, play that game for yourself first because the latent games are all a uh, sort of ongoing story. The main gist of this one is sort of its own thing, but there are elements from the first game that gets carried over to this one and you will not want to have that stuff spoiled for you. So I highly recommend playing the games in release order. Oh, here we are, Professor. Many thanks, Luke. Now let's get moving. You do know how to move about, don't you, Luke? You bet I do. Let's see, first off, I tap the shoe in the lower right corner. Then I just tap on one of the little arrows that appears to move in that direction. That's exactly right. Anytime you want to move, start by giving the shoe icon a tap. Go on, try it out. There's the way, my boy. One can't investigate properly without first doing a little legwork, as they say. I couldn't agree more, Professor. Now, shall we head off? Luke, before we set out, it would be wise of us to confirm the location of the Doctor's flat. During one of his visits some time ago, he was kind enough to leave me a map to his home. The map, as you see, is a rather unusual place of category of ca cart cartography. Wouldn't be returned to the latent series without messing up a bunch of words. Look here, Luke. What? C 
could this be a p -p 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 puzzle? Oh, how clever! The map itself is a puzzle! Professor, do you mind if I take a crack at it? I just know I could solve this one. Back like we never left. Puzzle number one. Dr. Schrader's map. In the map to Dr. Schrader's home, several pieces in the center have been cut out. Restore the map by inserting the missing pieces in the correct spots. Touch a piece with your stylus to grab it, then slide your stylus to move to the selected piece across the screen. You can't rotate the pieces. It may sound simple, but don't forget that you can move or remove pieces, including the one already in the middle of the map. Use your stylus to move objects around the touch screen. When you're satisfied with your answer, tap submit. Let's get things started. Hint number one, including, including the one piece, hey, one piece, that's in the middle of the map from the start, you have six pieces to move around and only five spaces to place them in. That means one of those pieces won't be used in this solution. Hint number two, take a close look at each individual piece of the map as well as the set portion of the map. As long as you make the roads on each piece fit cleanly into the larger framework, you'll find that the answer you'll find the answer sooner or later. Hint number three. You may have already noticed, but the piece positioned in the center of the map at the start of the puzzle isn't used in this solution. So all we have to do is get rid of this center piece altogether. Just put it to the oh okay, we can't put it to the side, but it's just gonna flop around like that. You don't have to rotate the pieces, thankfully. Uh, but what we need to do is put this one here. Uh, I don't... Maybe this one actually stays here? Uh, go over here. Looks so so far so good. Uh, do this little roundabout thing right here. And then finally, just end it off like that. And we are good to go. Hmm. Let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. One puzzle down, many, 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 many more to go. Excellent work. All about picarats. What are they? I have no idea, but I do know that they are points that indicate a puzzle's difficulty. The more picarats a puzzle is worth, the tougher it is. When you submit an incorrect answer for a puzzle, the number of picarats you can earn from that puzzle decreases. So think carefully before answering. Just like with my Curious Village Let's Play, this is going to be a 100% walkthrough of the sequel to Curious Village, which I cannot say the name of yet because we haven't had the dramatic intro. It would be real awkward if this game doesn't actually have one of those. But whatever, if you are not interested in the puzzle solving aspect of it, there will be timestamps in the description of every episode that tells you when to skip the puzzles. So if you ever want to skip a puzzle, then you can go ahead and do that. But also, if you're trying to see what puzzles are shown off in each episode, you could just check the description and see what numbers are listed there. So that's another way you could go ahead about using that. Hope you appreciate it, and I hope that this uh, turns out to be both a fun Let's Play and an informative guide to anyone who wishes to use it as such. Once you've beaten the game and saved, go to bonuses section and load your game file. From there, you could enter the top secret area where a number of fun extras are waiting for you. The more picarats you earn, the more extras you unlock. Excellent. With our destination confirmed, we are ready to pay the doctor a visit. Come now. I do believe we found the doctor's building. But which flat is his? That I'm afraid I don't know. But thinking on it now, the letter I received did mention something about this place. Puzzle number two, the doctor's home. Find Dr. Schrader's window from the details in his letter. In the morning, I often awaken to the sound of music drifting in from a nearby flat. Looking out, I spy a flag fluttering gently outside my window take a single sip of my tea, and turn my attention to the morning sun. Not many flats in London have a view of the sunrise anymore, you know. Circle the window from which the doctor views the sunrise. Use your stylus to draw a circle in the area you wish to submit as your answer. Once your pointing finger appears over the selection, tap submit. Hint number one. 
Since the doctor mentions hearing music from a nearby flat, you could rule out the window the music is coming from. Hint number two. As the doctor makes a special mention of being able to see the sunrise, it's likely his apartment is one of the ones higher up in the picture. Hint number three. The doctor talks about seeing the flag outside his window move in the breeze from the seat inside. There appears to be only one flat in the bunch where you could accomplish this feat. The solution is right over here. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. That's just sort of how I go about uh, with the Professor Layton LPs. If you saw my Curious Village Let's Play, then you should understand how this Let's Play is going to play out. Pretty much going to be exactly the same in terms of how quickly we're going to be going through puzzles. I I understand that some people may find it more fun if I was act actively trying to solve it on my own. But we could also just be stuck on uh, still screens for like a million hours at certain points. So I want to make this LP as informative and concise and short and sweet and to the point as possible. So I hope you are okay with what I'm going to be doing. Unless I'm mistaken, I think we found the right flat. Now follow me, Luke. We're going up. Oh, I nearly forgot. Before we leave, let's review how to use this trunk. To open the trunk, just tap the icon in the upper right corner of the screen. Inside, there's all sorts of helpful information filled away under different icons. Touch an icon to use it. And to save the progress we've made during our investigation, just tap the icon marked Save. This icon is the Puzzle Index. Tap it to view all the puzzles we've encountered thus far. Solved puzzles are marked with a check, and those we've yet to finish are blank. Puzzles we've already finished can be replayed by selecting them from this screen. Also, the index shows the locations of unsolved puzzles we've tried so that we may revisit them. Tap the journal icon to display my personal notes on key story events. So whenever you need to get access to the trunk, just give it a tap. I believe you also have the ability to... Uh, no, not yet. That's for a future latent game, but we'll get to that. As for the trunk, however, just go ahead and I always like to... Make sure that all my things are updated. It's like always reading an email. Just want to make sure I have zero in there. Like, I honestly can't understand how people could have like 2,000 unread messages in an email. I always hate when it even says that I have one unread message. Uh, even though I'm not going to reply to it right away. I just want to have it said that it was read. Uh, but yeah, the puzzle index, it allows you to keep track of the puzzles you found. So if you find an optional one that you're kind of stuck on and you don't want to solve it right away, then you can just sort of keep track of whether or not you found it, which is nice. Uh, the save option, Professor's Trunk, and that's it. There's no memo thingy. Maybe we get that a bit later, but I could have sworn that was a thing because like, I thought that was a thing in Curious Village and it didn't end up being the case. Uh, but I remember there was like a tradition of mine. Every time we had like a little memo thing here, I would always just draw a little picture and I was going to show it off in my completed save file. But maybe we get that later or maybe it's in a future game even still. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. For now, though, let's go ahead and tap around. Uh, if you tap on certain areas, you see that um, the text does not go away. I, again, thought that would be something that got improved in Diabolical Box so that like we wouldn't see the same things over and over again. But that seems to not be the case. What we can do, however, is talk to this guy by tapping on him. And in true latent tradition, every single character in this game is really sick and creepy looking. Hello there, mister. Never seen you around here before. Want to hear something useful? Check it out. See that mailbox right over there? Try tapping on it, will ya? Uh, if you say so, buddy boy. You found a hint coin. Hey, you're not the one who's supposed to teach us about that. Brilliant, you... That's a hint coin you found there. Ever work a puzzle and get stuck? It's times like these when I bet you'd fancy a hint, yeah? Well, when that happens, you could trade in those shiny hint coins for hints. They're scattered all over the place, which means you should always be on the lookout for them. Tap on anything suspicious, okay? Well, that's all I have to say. You take it easy, mister. Okay, so he just teaches you about hint coins. We're not going to be collecting every single hint coin in the game. I'll always be tapping around to see if I can find them. Usually there's three hint coins per screen, but there are some exceptions to that, like right now. Uh, but yeah, I usually I'll try and find as many of them as I can. But as um, you know, since I'm going to be reading the hints from uh, 
a website and gonna be solving all the puzzles on the first try there's no real need for me to collect hint coins or to use them so hopefully you're okay with that but without further ado let's go ahead and enter the building And up here we got any other things. You always just got to tap around real quick before you go and do anything. You can't, uh, it's not just hint coins that you're going to be on the lookout for. Sometimes when you tap around in these places, you could find hidden puzzles or uh, plot relevant items. So you're always going to want to tap around every time you get to a new screen. This is Dr. Schrader's flat. I'm sure of it. Andrew, are you home? It's Herschel. Herschel Layton. Sir, are you there? Doctor? I don't hear anyone in there. Professor, what if he's... There's no time to speculate now, Luke. We must get this door open immediately. Hmm, it seems to be locked from the inside. But without a key, there's no way to get in. Ah, oh, of course. In my haste, I forgot about keys that the doctor... I forgot about these keys that the doctor included in his letter. How convenient. Quick, Professor, let me try them on the door. Huh? That's strange. It doesn't seem like any of these keys work on the lock. Luke, don't you see? Dr. Schrader has set before us yet another puzzle to solve. Puzzle number three, the right key. It rhymes. And oh, hey, this is also our first example of something being a, div a bit different between the US version and the UK version. Uh, depending on what version of the game you're playing, you could possibly have different puzzles from me. I'm only going to be going over the uh, North American puzzles, so if you are playing the UK version, you'll be missing out on just a little bit of them. It's not a whole lot, just a few of them are switched around for whatever reason. Uh, this one in particular isn't different, it just has a different name. In the UK, it's called Which Key? instead of The Right Key. How riveting. Which key opens the door? As you might expect, the key won't open the door if its shape won't let it pass through the keyhole. Use your stylus to fit keys to the lock. Examine each key carefully and use your stylus to move the keys and find the one that fits into the lock. This is telling us about rotating stuff now. Hint number one. At a glance, the ends of the keys look too intricate when compared to the simple shape of a keyhole. Concentrate on finding a key with a shape that matches the structure of the lock. Hint number two. Who's to say one end of a key is any better than the other? Hint number three. Turn each key around and try inserting the part you'd normally call the grip. Now this one's a bit different in which I think even if you submit the wrong key, it won't count as like a wrong answer. You won't lose pick rats over it. But it doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna, well, I'm not going to go ahead and do that because I don't want to risk it. But yeah, as you can see, you can turn these keys around in any direction you want. And what we need to do is take this key, turn it around, and insert it through this side. Here goes. That was almost too easy. If you say so, Luke. That's right. Did you take you a while to figure out that the portion of the key resembling the grip was actually part of the that fit into the keyhole? Answers can often be found in the most unlikely of places. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Professor! Yeah. Andrew. How could this have happened? This is terrible, Professor. Do you suppose the Elysian box did this to Dr. Schrader when he tried to open it? I honestly don't know, Luke. But that can wait. Right now, we need to notify the police. Of course, Professor. Mm -hmm. What do we have here? train ticket for the Molentary Express. Now this is strange. Look, there's no destination written on this ticket. Have you ever seen a train ticket that didn't say where it was taking you? Yes, very strange indeed. Another mystery is opened up to us, a ticket with no destination. A single ticket with no visible destination was discovered in Dr. Schrader's home. 
It appears to be for the Molitary Express, but where exactly is it supposed to take its owner? Excuse me. Huh? Hey, it's you! Well, Inspector Chelmy's the name. You two found the body, did you? Luke, smash! No, Luke. Let him go. Luke, stop that. That's his face. Listen here, Luke. Oh, my gosh. His face doesn't come off. He's the real deal. What in the blazes? That's my face, not some piece of taffy. I'm so sorry, sir. I didn't mean it. I was sure we had another imposter on our hands. What in the world is this child talking about? I swear, young ones these days have no manners. My apologies for the confusion. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Herschel Layton. I'm a professor of archaeology at Gresson Heller University. And I'm his apprentice, Luke. Interesting. So if I understand correctly, you keep a child around as an apprentice, do you? Not at all, sir. In truth, he's... Professor Layton's apprentice, like I said. Hmm. Well, it's really none of my concern. I have a crime scene that needs my attention. Clear a path, will you? But of course. Luke, not a word about that ticket to the authorities, all right? You got it, Professor. Ooh, Leighton, so scandalous. Hmm, yes. Let's see. What do we have here? A murder? Or was the crime self-inflicted? Inspector? I should tell you that the door was locked before Luke and I came in. I see. So this door, the sole entry point in and out of this eighth floor flat, was shut tight. Then the doctor was holed up in here, completely apart from the outside world, yes? That being the case... Hmm, yes, I'm sure of it. The old gent must have suffered a heart attack. What? How did you come to that conclusion, sir? Use your noodle, laddie. What other explanation could there be? It's true that the flat is on the eighth floor and that the door was locked, Inspector. Still, I'd hesitate to say that this room was completely closed off from the outside. Is that so? Please elaborate. Isn't it obvious? There's something quite unusual about our crime scene that's been overlooked. Eh? It's as plain as the nose on your face, Inspector. <laughs> I suppose you academics think your fancy degrees prepare you to play detective, eh? I tell you, nowadays, it seems like everybody and their mum thinks they can do my job. Now, as I was saying, the cause of death was heart failure, plain and simple. And there's what caused it. What killed the doctor? The dinosaurs! This, it's a scaled down model of a Kronosaurus, if I'm not mistaken. I reckon that ugly mug will give anyone nightmares. Here's what probably happened. The old fellow turned on a light, took one look at the beast, and then keeled right over. But this is the doctor's own home. Why would the bones he put up himself scare him? People have a way of becoming forgetful with age. Not that you'd understand, boy. Well, you're right about that. I don't think I understand it at all. Mr. Letton, was it? No? Ah, yes, Layton. Mr. Layton, what do you think? The scenario you paint certainly isn't out of the realm of possibility. But, considering the lights were off when we entered the room, I don't think we've found our answer yet. Oh, uh, really? Furthermore, look around you, Inspector. Doesn't anything strike you as odd? What 
do you mean, Professor? Study your surroundings, Luke. I'm sure you can see it too. Puzzle number four, a secure room. With its windows opening out into thin air eight stories up and its door securely bolted, you might think that the room is inaccessible from the outside. However, a single, a single unusual detail reveals the truth of what went on here. Your job is to look around the room by tapping the arrows and find the detail. Once you've got it, circle the area with your stylus and choose submit to give your answer. Make sure to circle only one object when you answer. So this could be a bit tricky if your DS doesn't recognize the thing that you circled, but hopefully we won't have that problem. And these arrows allow us to look around the entire room. And we get a little back shot of Leighton right here. That's really cool. And then of Chelmy or Chemley or whatever. I think I did think his name was Chemley for the longest time, but it's Chelmy is like a reference to tell me. And then Leighton's like, oh, you'll find out. I'm about to summon it. Uh, but anyway, hit number one. Take a good look at all of the views. You're looking for something unusual. There are lots of odd objects in this room, but while may... But while many may be strange, they aren't the brand of unusual you're searching for. Hint number two, you won't find the answer in the areas that Professor Layton and Inspector Chelmy are examining. Hint number three, the object in question is often found in pairs. I thought it said in Paris for a second, I was like, what? But the solution is right over here. And what you need to do is... Circle the ripped curtain. Here goes. Piece of cake. Thankfully, we didn't have any stylus blunders. Nice eye. For some reason, part of the curtain shown here has been ripped clean off. Of course, this window is missing a curtain. Hmm. So it is. But what exactly does this have to do with my crime scene? It means someone exited the building through this window, and I'll bet he's our culprit. I'd say that's a sound theory. Well done, my boy. Oh, uh, yes. Sound as a pound. I was just about to propose the same idea myself. Liar! Shh, Luke, listen. I don't believe our friend the inspector will be of much help to us. What say you and I conduct a little investigation of our own? Professor, look! There's something in Dr. Schrader's hand! It's an old photograph, but it's been torn into so many pieces, I can't make out the original image. And one more mystery for this episode before we end things off. Torn photograph. Look at this photograph! Except you can't because it's all torn up. And you'd think we would just put it back together because that would be a very simple and easy to do puzzle. But we're not going to bother with it right now, I guess. Hey, what's the big idea? You can't just put evidence in a crime scene. Get your hands off that... Uh, that... Uh, what is this, anyway? Hmm, not that it matters. I'll be holding on to that. Now, out with the both of you. Well, I guess that explains why we won't be putting it together right now. Dr. Schrader indicated that he was in possession of the Elysian box, yet there was nothing resembling such an artifact in his home. Do you think the person who did this to him was after the box? Hmm, it's an interesting theory, but for the moment that's all it is. However, it's my belief that we hold a clue to understanding today's events, namely that ticket. The Molentary Express ticket, right Professor? Correct, Luke. I believe that a trip aboard the Molentary Express is in order. Okay, I lied. There was one more even after that one. The box's location. Somebody managed to steal the Elysian box from Dr. Schrader's home without leaving behind a single implicating clue. 
who could have made off with the box. It's gotta be that scoundrel Red Herring! Or maybe not. Do you suppose we'll find the key to unlocking this mystery on the train? Dr. Schrader did his best to point us toward the Molentary Express. Should something happen to him? Sure as fog on a London morning, I know this train will lead us to the answers we seek. Professor Layton and Luke sped away from the city, unaware of the secrets that awaited them down those iron tracks. And that is going to be it for this episode. Our next Layton adventure is underway, and I am incredibly excited to share it all with you and experience this game once again. Just like with all the other Layton games, I only ever played them one time, so my memory is kind of foggy as to how everything plays out. I'll be re-experiencing this game with all of you, and I hope I could introduce some of you to this series as well. Next time on Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. Our trip on the Molentary Express will be underway. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.